Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Glad that you could join us for another segment. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Thomas Kim, president and CEO of Epivario. That's a, a preclinical pharmaceutical company. And he's joining us to, to talk about some new uh, research. Uh, the study was published in Nature recently. Welcome to the program, Dr. Kim. How are you? Thank you. Thank you. Um, you are the president and CEO of, uh, of Epivario. What is your background? Yeah, so uh, my background is uh, I'm a chemist. Um, I did some graduate work in biochemistry, uh, have a master's degree, and then went to law school. So I took a, uh, a little circuitous route and uh, had been working as a corporate and IP attorney on various um, biotech and, and pharmaceutical clients and, and, and employers. And uh, most recently, I was a general counsel of, uh, of another Penn startup, um, phase three development uh, company, and and after I left there, I I, guess I went back to the well and um, mm-hmm. partnered up with another uh, Penn professor, uh, which left at the very end. Epivario, as I stated, is a preclinical pharmaceutical company. Uh, what is preclinical? Are we talking? Is a company that just does does trials, preparation for trials? So, so basically when we say that is uh, we're in preclinical phase, so our drug has not been um, approved to be studied in, in humans yet. So there's some animal work that needs to be done and, um, and then some safety toxicity analysis before it's, it's greenlit to be run in a human trial. In the publication Nature, there was a recent study Talk about this study that was published in October of this year, having to do with alcohol metabolism. Yeah. So, so as a as a little bit of a, um, a backdrop to that paper, the company was founded by Shelly Berger and Philip News, their epigeneticists. So they're really trying to understand uh, mechanisms that turn on and off gene expression um, that's based upon chromatin modification. So. Uh, where we're particularly focused is uh, this kind of activity happening in the in the brain and in neuronal cells, and 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 fast forward to the paper, the discovery really was the byproduct or the metabolic product from um, alcohol ethanol, uh, as that's being processed by your liver, uh, that metabolite actually feeds into. Uh, the, the mode of action or the mechanism that um, our co-founders discovered, which uh, enhances your 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 memory as you're as you're drinking. So uh, that was uh, that was pretty startling discovery. Um, it's not just a, a positive experience, but there's also this um, biochemistry that's happening that the the byproduct of, of ethanol is really helping to boost this. Um, this memory response that um, associates your experience with, um, with with drinking. So are you saying that the experience that you're having while you're drinking is enhanced and more memorable? Or are we talking about um, this byproduct of the alcohol metabolism uh, enhances memory short term or long term overall? Yeah. So it's it, these are these are temporal processes and it, again the the enlightening aspect of this we we know from other studies that uh, our 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 target there's an enzyme and we believe it's involved in in helping us form these these negative memories based on um uh, experiences such as um you know we're also working on PTSD but uh, traumatic experiences or drug and alcohol addiction, that, that, this craving response. So we believe that craving response is, is actually even even further enhanced because uh, the the ethanol being metabolized actually uh, contributes to that to this process that we discover. Now you say there are still animal more animal trials to be done. Yeah, I, I, there's different different models that. I work on um, um, you know, studying addiction, and, and and hopefully that that work will translate into expected outcomes in in human trials. 
Now, if I'm understanding correctly, what you've discovered is um, basically the pleasurable or favorable memory of the experience while drinking. Are you saying that that is what's contributing to the addiction itself, the favorable memory? Yes. Okay. So we we're looking at uh, various cues that bring about this positive experience. Are you saying that you're trying to eliminate the positive experience or replace it with some type of uh, negative chemical release so that addiction no, 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 no. doesn't yeah, it's nothing like that. It's it's really trying to try to eliminate these these triggers to incite the, the this craving response, um, it, the contextual cues that that I was mentioning. So uh, oftentimes you you hear uh, therapists talk about avoiding certain places and, and people and, and, and things that will trigger, uh, these, these craving or addictive, um, responses. And, and we believe this epigenetic, um, pathway really is, is, is a part of that. And we feel like can, if you can restore that process, then you can start eliminating, um, the, these cues that trigger these the craving response in, in the addicts. In your trials, are you creating addicted animals uh, in some yeah, of your, your yeah. trials? Is that, is that what you're doing? You're creating addicted yeah. animals and then you're um, trying to make it so that the addiction, I guess, disappears based on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, you can, you can think about it um, just like I was mentioning with, uh, with, Alcoholics trying to trying to reduce these situations that 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 trigger these craving responses. But similarly, with animals, you can get them conditioned to prefer or 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 crave the alcohol in this case, and um, and the goal, the the outcome for for the study would be when they're on our drug, then. Um, uh, then what would happen is you'd see a reduced uh, craving, a reduced response in the animals. The goal, obviously, is to um, be able to treat or eliminate addictions, you know, in in the future based on this yeah. research. Are we hoping to prevent addiction or treat addiction as it um, rears its head? Yeah, I, th- I think the first... Uh, entree into really helping um, alcohol addiction is to is to reduce or, or start eliminating uh, these triggers and and um, and eliciting these intense cravings because I believe a lot of the self help group help um, cognitive behavioral therapy they all have they all have effect, positive effect, if the craving wasn't so intense. Um, I know oftentimes, like I said before, therapists will advise patients to avoid certain uh, situations and certain contexts that would, would likely trigger the, the craving response. So we think by eliminating some of those uh, cues that would trigger the craving, we believe that all those self-help, group help, or, or 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 behavioral therapy that you undertake has has a greater likelihood to um, work on the patient without without those strong cravings coming back again and again. Well, where can we get some more information about uh, Epivario and about this uh, research into the alcohol metabolism? Sure. So our, our co-founders, again, uh, Shelly Berger at Abramson Medical School at, at University of Pennsylvania, um, Philip Muse, who's a uh, postdoc in Dr. Eric Nestor's lab at, at Mount Sinai. And then our website is www.epivario.com, E-P-I-V-A-R-I-O.com. And again, as you mentioned, the, the paper was, um, was published at the end of October in um in a in a high profile journal nature great well thomas i appreciate you joining us here on health professional radio i appreciate the time and uh, thank you very much
You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.